Transition state theory gives scientists a visual way of explaining why different products are formed by a reaction put in different environments. In doing this, transition state theory also explains rates of reaction. In a reaction, when two things come together, they repel each other. When enough energy is added, though, they overcome the energy of activation to form something that looks like a cross between the two, called the transition state. This point is in equilibrium and can go on to form the product or return to the reactants. We can model the amount of energy in the reaction using a potential energy surface diagram like this one. The elevation of the hills shows increasing energy, while the x and y directions represent the progression of the reaction. The top of the hills are where the transition state will occur. If there is no more energy added to the system than at the initial state, the reactant molecules, represented by this Honda Civic, will stay at the bottom of the hills. With no additional energy, the molecules will stay here like a car with no gas. When enough energy is added to the system, like gas to a car, the car can reach the top of the transition state hill. From the top of the hill, the car can rely on its potential energy to get to the bottom, either returning to the reactants, or once back at the top, continuing on to form the products. If more energy is added to the car when it is at the bottom, it can make it up a bigger hill. Now, it can choose to go over either the big or the small hill, forming two different products, like the car having enough gas to go to two different destinations. Rate is determined by how many cars go over a hill and form products. When there are two hills, the lower one is easier to go over because it requires less energy. If there were a lot of cars, we would expect more of them to go over the easier, lower hill. Because of this, the lower hill would have a higher rate than the hill with the higher potential energy. In a car, increasing either the amount of gas or torque output of the engine would make it able to go over higher hills. For a chemical reaction, energy can be added in the form of increased temperature or pressure, amongst others. Added energy can help the reaction get past higher transition states or increase the rate of a lower transition state. Before transition state theory was developed, scientists used the Arrhenius rate law. The Arrhenius equation was developed from experimental observation and ignores some details that influence rate, making it hard to understand the pre-exponential factor and the activation energy. Once transition state theory came along, 46 years later, Henry Eyring developed the Eyring equation, which explained both the pre-exponential factor and the activation energy using transition state theory's definition of rates. However, transition state theory is more of a conceptual basis for reactions and is not perfect. If a reaction has very high energy, like at high temperatures, it can't really tell the difference between a high and a low hill. A flying car doesn't care how tall a hill is. Clearly, the traffic metaphor doesn't work so well here, but when the cars can't tell the difference, more might go over the tall hill, changing the rates of reaction. Another limitation to transition state theory is quantum tunneling. Quantum tunneling is when the path of the reaction goes through the hill instead of over it. This means molecules don't need the activation energy to get to the top, so more can turn into product and will change the rate of reaction. This happens more often with lower hills that have smaller activation energies, where there is less of a difference between the bottom and the top. While there are some limitations to transition state theory, it is still used in the study of kinetics today because it has explained where the Arrhenius equation came from and has provided an understandable explanation for reaction rates.